also we are going to learn something new uh, aspect that will be definitely helpful for our uh, teaching career and this kind of program are organized for the development of our uh, growth in our career that is the main ultimate aim of this kind of program on this uh, day once again i am telling this fdp is organized under the scheme of paramas uh, that is uh, provided by support sponsorship provided by the ugc for promoting the quality initiatives as well as quality activities to be initiated by the higher education institution and also making the non aggregated colleges to get into aggregation process nowadays the aggregation and nba nba aggregation or nac aggregation as well as nirf ranking is essential for the higher education institution to get into uh, several development so so many fundings are based on this kind of aggregations also most of the funding agencies are providing the sponsorship or any funding uh, before the highly ranked institutions so today amidst our uh, meeting um, chief guest dr b selvarani uh, from a well reputed university with a very good ranking in the nirf recently they obtained as well as a double plus rating in the nac aggregation also in the august month so such a eminent personality from the eminent institution we are all privileged and blessed with her presence i wholeheartedly welcome dr b selvarani um, associate professor department of information technology vit vellur uh, for uh, acting as the resource person and accepting our invitation thank you thank you for your presence uh, amidst your busy schedule and uh, i also uh, thank uh, uh, the sudden i approached uh, her su suddenly i uh, with a short period of notice but immediately she accepted our invitation thank you thank you for your presence here and uh, she is going to deliver a talk on various tools and techniques that are behind the online evaluation mode so nowadays we are in a pandemic we are taking the not only taking the class as well as assessing our students through online so she is going to deliver something new concept uh, i think and uh, that will be definitely helpful for us to make the assessment in a easier and an effective manner uh, for the online evaluation mode i wholeheartedly welcome uh, all the participants and the resource person as well as my colleague and dear students friends who are all supporting to this fdp my sincere uh, uh, thanks and welcome to dr laran sir director mca ayanarat janiamal college sivagasi as well as dr s vairamuthu from vit for the two days presence thank you thank you with this i conclude my presidential address thank you one and all thank you ma'am i invite mrs d m triba ma'am to deliver the chief guest introduction good morning everyone it is my immense pleasure to introduce our chief guest dr b selvarani mca me phd she is working as associate professor in department of information technology vit vellur she completed her phd in computer science and engineering and completed her me in computer science and engineering and has been awarded first rank at college level in me she completed her mca from mk university and completed bsc physics from mk university she has written a book chapter titled as a comprehensive review on bacteria foraging optimization technique in studies of computational intelligence she has made a mark in the field of education and has conducted 16 extension programs she has published 11 journals in national and international level she acted as coordinator in examination cell and now she is coordinator in board of studies at vit vellur she certified many online courses like blockchain technologies data science 
and Python programming offered by University of Michigan and ATAL Academy. She is life member in the Indian Society for Technical Education and the Computer Society of India. It's proud. Uh, it's our proud privilege to have her as chief guest. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. To be inspired is great, but to be an inspiration is an honor. With this note, I would like to welcome our chief guest, Dr. B. Selvarani, ma'am, to start this session. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you. Hope is it visible? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, very good morning uh, to the faculty members, uh, my colleagues, uh, as well as uh, the members from uh, Mentees uh, Colleges for Anjak. Uh, and I wish to thank uh, Anjak Management, uh, Principal Sir, uh, Head of the Department, uh, for giving me this uh, greater opportunity uh, to be a part of this Parma scheme in this uh, FTP series. Uh, here, uh, uh, the session I wish to discuss is based on the tools and techniques used for effective online evaluation. And we all know the importance of uh, online evaluation nowadays in this pandemic period. Uh, not only in pandemic period, if we use this uh, tools and techniques for evaluating our students, for assessing our students in our regular sessions, it will be helpful for us to complete our process very easily. That's a major uh, advantage. And to analyze the performance of the students also, we can use these tools in an easier manner. Uh, uh, for example, if we are going to analyze the performance of the students based on their uh, uh, marking, how many of the students got more than 90, how many of the students are in between the range of 80 to 90, or below 35, below 40, and so on. If we are using an Excel sheet, it would be very easy yeah, rather than doing it manually. right? So in that similar manner, we have so many kinds of freeware tools as well as uh, commercial tools available on market and uh, which help us to uh, do our assessment, not only the uh, teaching learning process, but also the evaluation process in an easier manner. So I wish to share some of the tools which are available uh, free and uh, some are paid. And I wish to give you the demonstration on the uh, uh, familiar tools, whatever we are using in our institute to evaluate or to assess our students. So the first uh, content, uh, what are the contents I'm going to deliver in this session? Uh, what is an uh, assessment? A simple introduction that we all know for, we are all faculty members and we know what are assessments and the type of assessments. Uh, may, we have several types of assessments, but uh, we'll be talking uh, mainly two types of assessments in our course period. And what are the tools uh, we can use for effective evaluation? And I give you a demonstration on uh, four tools, whatever we are using uh, in our institute, like Microsoft Teams, which is uh, commercial, uh, Google Form, which is free, Schoology, which is free, and Moodle, which is a free open source uh, platform, uh, and which will help you to uh, configure as well as assess your students in a very easier manner. OK. So what is an assessment? We all know we are uh, we are uh, faculty members. And uh, we started teaching uh, UG students. And we are uh, teaching PG students and uh, guiding PhD scholars and so on. Uh, everywhere, starting from the kindergarten onwards, we are having the concept of uh, assessment. Okay. Uh, it is an important part of uh, any course delivery. If you consider a kindergarten student, there is also an assessment or evaluation is an important part. And if you are considering a PhD scholar, there also an assessment is an integral part. It is very important. We cannot avoid assessment uh, in education. Okay? Not only in education, even in uh, commercial organizations also, business organizations also, they are conducting uh, evaluation uh, and they are giving appraisal for the uh, employees, those who are getting good score in their evaluation. So we cannot avoid assessment in the course of study. And these assessments we use to evaluate as well as to improve the learning process of the students. So once if we uh, find out where the student lies, then we can easily guide them to move further in their uh, path, in the learning path. So for that, we are using assessment. And it is used to determine whether we reach the objective of our education. If we are offering a course, we will be having several object objectives, like course objectives. And we'll be having course outcomes also. These are the terms you might be familiar since you are uh, dealing with the process of accreditation. 
So we will be having several benchmarks for each and every courses we are offering. And for each and every course, we have course outcomes also. So if you evaluate the students based on their course outcomes, we can easily say that we achieved the goal. We reached the threshold of the course outcome for our course, whatever we are offering. So for checking whether we reached the goal, we achieved the goal or not, not only based on the uh, course outcomes, but also based on the objective of our education, we can easily identify whether we reached the goal or not. And we can guide the students in their curriculum path based on their evaluation score and in which place the students are standing and how much we they need to move further and in which area or the topic they are very weak and how the students can be trained in order to move further or in order to get good scores and so on. So for that purposes also we are using the assessment process and to monitor the progress of the students. Yes, of course, if, if we are conducting the assessment or we are evaluating the students at the end of the semester or end of the term or end of the year in schools, it won't be helpful for us to identify the progress of the students. So we have to identify the slow learners. We have to identify the average learners. We have to identify the fast learners so that we can guide them according to their level of understanding, to their level of IQ and so on. So to monitor the progress of each and every student in our course, we have to do the assessment process very clearly and in regular basis. And last but not the least, we can identify the gaps. Where the students are lagging? What are the topics which are difficult to learn to the students? And what are the ways in which we can make them to understand the topics very clearly? And knowledge, okay, what are the prior knowledge of the students before coming to the course? Or what is the current knowledge the students are having? Or what will the knowledge they'll be getting in after completing our course? So all these things can be identified by means of conducting the assessments. And I told you the type of assessments, they will be telling more number of uh, types of assessments, but uh, we'll be talking about two types of assessments only, formative assessment and uh, summative assessment. So formative assessment, it, it is also known as assessment for learning. Okay, So we will be conducting formative assessment, a small kind of test or quizzes or uh, a discussion, uh, something else in order to find out uh, during the period of course itself, in order to find out how the students are understanding the topic, how the students are understanding the course content and so on. So we will be conducting throughout the course the formative assessment. So we can initially we can start with interacting with the students in the beginning of the class or at the end of the class or in the middle of the class or if they raise queries in the middle of the class we can answer them or we can conduct surprise testers or we can conduct a sleep testers for example we used to make use of uh, uh, four sets of questions for quizzes for five marks and uh, surprisingly we will be giving those sleep testers to the students in the class without informing them priorly. So such kind of tests we can conduct in order to understand whether they uh, could grasp the concepts of the course content so far from the beginning. right? So we can conduct it periodically for uh, module by module or topic by topic uh, in a regular basis so that we can understand the level of understanding of the students. So this will help us to identify which topic is difficult, which topic is very hard for them to follow, or in which topic we need to concentrate more, or we need to refer more resources in order to deliver our content and so on. And uh, simple things, a simple test we can have in order to assess our students formatively, like quizzes, a small number of questions, or by means of giving them tasks, or by means of giving them role plays. So simple, uh, simple test we can uh, we can give them in order to assess them formatively. Okay, If we are going for uh, assess the students formatively, like in a periodic basis, we need to uh, remember some points, some set of points. And uh, these points are adopted from Nicole and uh, Dick, and uh, they published in 2007. So I adopted from those uh, uh, articles. We have to be very clear uh, in order to measure the performance of the students. Okay, So if we are giving 10 questions, uh, in a quiz, we have to be very clear. OK, 10 out of 10 means good performance. No, we can have a scale or range like 8 to 10 may be good or best or 7 to 8 may be good or better and best. So while measuring the performance of the students itself, we have to be very clear and we have to be very positive. And we have to boost the students uh, for self-reflection. So what is meant by self-reflection? We can ask the students to collect, correct the peer papers or the peer students' papers so that they can understand 
one thing is they can identify the answers solutions what are wrong or what are right and they can understand the level of understanding of their peer students also so for that self reflection we can boost the students we can encourage the students to correct those such, those kind of papers and we can uh, during group discussion also we can make the students as judges to evaluate their own students their own classmates their own friends okay and uh, we we make we can provide the students a detailed feedback what is meant by detailed feedback so if a particular question is wrong you know in in order to say that this question you have provided a wrong answer we can ask them in the particular concept and you, we can ask the students to read those particular concept and we can ask them to refer to the particular concept in web or in book or in some other uh, references or like youtube videos and so on so that they can understand where they left mistake for example in problem solving papers in programming papers if they are logically wrong or if they are pro, or syntactically wrong or semantically wrong so such kind of detailed feedback if we give to the students then they'll be grasping it very easily and they can uh, make them to improve further and we can invite the students to discuss about the goals and the evaluation criteria so if you fix a evaluation criteria for your course we used to discuss with the students in the beginning of the semester itself in the very first class itself these are the evaluation criteria i am going to use in my course to evaluate you to assess you so three number of digital assessments or one quiz online quiz or two quizzes it depends on the teacher but we can discuss with the students whether this is okay or uh, if it is difficult to write two quizzes we can go for digital assignments but you should not make it easy even if they ask for assess assignment you have to make it harder you have to make them to think further so we can discuss the evaluation criteria also with the students even in formative assessment as well as in summative assessment and always we should uh, spread the false positive vibes if the, any student got zero in uh, in a particular quiz out of out of 10 we should not discourage them right we should not make him to embarrass by means of making them making him standing in front of other students and so on so we have to always spread the positivity among the students not only during our course delivery but also during our assessment period so we have to understand why he had obtained zero it may be his fault or our fault right both the ends may have faults so we have to understand why he got zero even he he didn't uh, uh, even he didn't open his mouth we have to ask him to make understand why it is what happened and uh, we have to ask him to move further to understand the concepts clearly and we have to uh make them to understand the importance of assessment also right so always we should uh, spread the positive vibes and it's very important uh, in every accreditation we should uh, show the closed cycle closed cycle okay we have course objectives we have course outcomes and we are evaluating the students based on the course outcomes and after evaluation what is the final output whether we reached the uh, attainment level or not if not if not we reached the threshold value for a particular course outcome we have to understand where the error is where the fault is and we have to try to close the loop we have to try to uh, fill the gap by means of doing something additional making uh, slow learners to uh, write an uh, extra test or uh, by means of giving extra problems to solve or by means of giving special classes to the students those who are poor to understand the particular concept so we should take several activities which is very important to fill the gap between the current performance of the students and what is expected performance of the students to attain the course outcome level okay. so finally we have to gather feedback so uh, see for example after completing one month of uh, course delivery i used to collect the feedback from the students whether i am okay whether i am slow or whether my face is very fast whether they could understand the concepts clearly or in a particular topic if they have any queries or if the any particular topic if they felt very difficult i used to give them additional references my class notes or my uh, video presentations uh, so many kinds of uh, helps we used to do to the students after collecting the feedbacks in between and in our institute they used to collect midterm feedbacks also so based on the feedback of the students we should not blame the students or we should not corner the students we have to improve ourselves also because this field is the divine field right so we have to make ourselves uh, or we have to strengthen ourselves in order to provide a good delivery content or good content delivery to the students by means of collecting the feedbacks we should not get angry for the positive negative feedbacks while becoming happy for the positive feedbacks right next one is summative assessment and the formative assessment is termed as assessment for learning and summative assessment is termed as assessment of learning so when do we conduct the summative assessment at the end of the course actually if it is a school at the end of the year 
and at the end of the course it may be a semester or a, a, it may be a year depending on the curriculum of the particular organization at the end of the course we used to conduct and how why we are conducting the summative assessment whether the entire course content is delivered uh, after they are delivering the entire course content to the students whether the students understand uh, the course content whether they gain skills from the particular course content or they gain the knowledge or whether they understand clearly about the course what we delivered to the student and how we are conducting uh, obviously we used to conduct test and the test might be like a descriptive type and uh, we'll be having uh, problem solving so many kinds of uh, uh, questions we can ask and we can ask them to submit observations uh, during the end of the semester in order to evaluate lab activities or sometimes we used to conduct oral examinations also like our projects uh, capstone projects and so on so finally we test the students based on the overall activity of the particular semester or the particular period in order to understand or in order to check whether the students understand the course content very clearly or not okay and we need to remember five points uh, during conducting the summative assessments the very first thing is define rubrics uh, since summative formative assessments are conducted on the go uh, we don't have any kind of uh, rules for framing the questions and so on but in case of summative assessments we need to define the rubrics okay so rubrics in the sense what are the uh, points we are expecting from the students and uh, we need to prepare the key for evaluation we need to provide the step marks for the problem solving questions so uh, based on the points uh, we mentioned in the rubrics we have to go for evaluating the students and we have to define the questions very clearly so we are insisted to follow bloom's taxonomy right so instead of giving explain the concept discuss the concept we have to go for using the catchy words in order to define the questions very clearly and we should not make any confusion we should not write a question as an essay right so we have to be very crisp and clear while writing or while framing the question itself so that the students would be very interested in order to answer the question in order to uh, in order to answer the question after reading it thoroughly after understanding it thoroughly it is very important and uh, we have to access the uh, comprehensiveness in case of summative assessment so in case of formative assessment we will be uh, conducting small types of tests but at the final stage we will be using uh, we will be uh, using the comprehensive question like uh, descriptive questions in order to make them to answer uh, about their understanding very clearly in the course and we have to ensure uh, well defined parameters like i said similar to rubrics we have to define the parameters also even if they are uh, while while answering in a mathematical question if they are bringing out 7.3 instead of 7.4 we have to check where they they missed or whether they round up the answer or not so such kind of uh, parameters we have to check before giving or allotting the marks to the students score to the students and we that's it is also very important in the summative assessment because formative assessment we are conducting in class during our course period so we know the students face to face who's answering who's not answering and who's giving who's getting zero or who's getting 10 out of 10 and so on but in case of summative assessment we are assessing the entire class for the entire period of our course delivery and so we have to grade them anonymously so always we used to have dummy numbers uh, anyway some students used to write or give a clue to the faculty members uh, at any any point of uh, uh, writing uh, maybe uh, presentation type or presentation style uh, we can identify the students but okay it's okay but uh, we should not uh, grade them uh, in, we should avoid the bias okay, in evaluation the evaluating the students uh, at the final stage because it's their life so we have to grade anonymously okay, right. now we have uh, tools for effective evaluation so why we are going for tools uh, the conventional method of teaching we started with the blackboard uh, chalk piece dusters and so on and then we started with the whiteboard with the markers and then we uh, gone for uh, smart boards in which we had the smart board software and in the software itself we can play the uh, powerpoint or we can play the videos uh, and we can write uh, we can derive the equations we can derive the uh, solutions or something why we are going for such kind of tools the technology grows right so since the technology grows we have to go along with the technology uh, we have to we have to move further we cannot sit and we cannot have the chalk piece and uh, blackboard for teaching uh, as well as for evaluating uh, papers and pen and so on 
uh so during this pandemic uh, we learned a lot how to go online for teaching as well as for evaluating the students okay if we do this thing students will be having several kind of options also for writing the solutions but we have to be very clear uh, because we have more experience and we have more knowledge in the subjects okay uh, so these tools uh, why we are using these kind of tools uh, first very first thing is uh, waste of resources can be avoided we can avoid papers pens and pencils so that we can save trees also right and uh, the manpower right while correcting the papers by means of using pen anyway we are missing but while correcting the papers 75 amount of papers with the papers uh, with pen pen uh, it would take much time rather than reading the solution on the screen or make the automatic evaluation by the tool itself will help you to save your timing in evaluation or in assessment Uh, so these are the main reasons or the advantages why we are using uh, tools for effective uh, uh, tools for assessing the students in an effective manner uh, even though we were in offline we use the tools for uh, assessing the assessment of the assignment of the students digital assignments of the students lab activities and uh, quizzes okay for all those things instead of doing the manually we used to follow the tools uh, tools in the sense we will be having several kinds of tools freeware tools as well as uh, commercial tools so it depends on the institute also and you can for go for uh, free tools whichever are available for making your evaluation in an efficient manner okay let me discuss you some of the tools let me list down you some of the tools and for which purpose we, uh, the tool may be used but uh, uh, please pardon me uh, i prepared all those tools for uh, your utilization only because we have our own tools in our institute and we are using those tools very effectively and so we didn't deviate from those tools because we are coaching uh, we are conducting our examinations in uh, uh, code tandra and the code tandra will automatically port mark into our uh, uh, database we top database and so not necessary to go for another tool for picking up another tool but anyway for conducting quizzes for evaluating the lab activities we are using moodles and so on moodle and so on so these tools will help you to uh, check for which purpose we are going for assessing your students and based on the complexity of the tool whether it is paid or the, whether it is uh, free free you can use it for evaluating your students okay so the tools are used for both formative as well as summative assessment you can use it for both the purpose of the assessment okay the very first tool is class marker it is free and it is professional and it is very easy to use also and in this class marker we can go for customizing the learning as well as learning as well as evaluating the assessments the next one is class tools class tools uh, it is based on free games okay so kids may be liking uh, games uh, and based on the kids interest these tools uh, this tool will provide the quizzes based on the games and all other activities are also there like making uh, diagrams making activities in a fraction of second and it is a very quick tool to conduct the quizzes to uh, frame the quizzes and to make it conduct with the students and the next one is easy test maker uh, test maker this by the name itself it indicates that it is used for creating the test uh, here we can use multiple choice questions fill in the blanks and uh, matching the following Uh, or we can give short answer questions also or true or false and so on okay, it's also free and we have hot potatoes uh, here they fix the six types of questions for conducting the test for evaluating your students like uh, crossword puzzle uh, multiple choice questions short answers gap filling and jumbled sentences match the following and so on so you can test the students based on all these six patterns if you are going for using hot potatoes Uh, next one is quandary uh, quandary it is uh, like a maze you know what is meant by a maze right and uh, here the uh, student will be given a case study and the case study based on the student's uh, uh, idea foresight uh, the case study would be solved right so like a maze the the problem solving skills can be tested uh, by means of using the tool quandary the next one is qdoc uh, here also we can conduct quizzes and we can give revision doc, revision to the students by means of uploading our documents and the learning content also and we can have interactive sessions in qdoc qdoc okay it is very helpful for conducting the interactive sessions next one is ed games uh, this is also mainly used for enhancing the classroom teaching 
and all the types of uh, quizzes you can conduct by means of using the ed games next one is quiz slides uh, sli stylish quizzes you can create by means of using quiz slides not in a conventional manner not in a boring manner you can use it for uh, creating the quizzes in a stylish manner and what to learn and uh, this tool is used to help the students uh, to us to listen to the classes as well as to write the assessments and some more tools we have several freewares available uh, here one is assessments assessments is a tool which will help us to create assignments and those assignments will be submitted by the students uh, online uh, and according to the curriculum we can design our content uh, in case of the tool for conducting the quizzes or for uploading the assignments by the students we can use this tool assessment and which will help us to give the le lectures also remotely remotely okay. next one is ed puzzle so how some of you might heard about it ed puzzle uh, the basic account is free actually in ed puzzle but uh, the additional features are paid so if you want to use the very basic concepts alone to create quizzes to turn the videos into quizzes you can use ed puzzle so what is meant by turning video into uh, quiz in the sense you can use uh, any youtube video or any video you created by your own for delivering the course content and so on uh, you can upload that video and you can capable of trimming that video in between and in between the video you can insert questions so if you upload the video alone students would say that i watched the video already but if you insert the questions in between the video they should watch the video completely so that in between the video clippings you can have the quizzes and the students can attend the clippings answer the quiz questions and then uh, next clipping next quiz and so on so that we can create an interest to the students to complete the video on time okay for that purpose you can use ed puzzle and next tool is edulastic uh, edulastic is uh, a free version actually but it is distributed distributed in the sense we may have schools or colleges uh, with more than one number of branches right if we are going to use uh, the assessment pattern uh, like campus wise and we are combining the campuses together in order to conduct the assessments like we have campuses in chennai amravati bhopal and in bellur and if we combine assessment in all the branches together all the campuses together uh, we can use edulastic uh, but if we are going for a district wise or the uh, campus wise assessment technique then we have to pay for red elastic otherwise it is free okay the next one is split grid uh, it is also a video discussion platform and which will permit the students to go for group discussion uh, which will help the students to discuss among yourself about the content course content about the quiz questions about their solutions and they can uh, have a healthy discussion on them okay it is termed as uh, flip grid uh, it is also free actually next is uh, gimkit uh, gimkit uh, which is uh, liked by most of the students like a gaming uh, software gimkit is uh, working for conducting the quizzes and it is very fast so the fast is liked by the youngsters uh, uh, and so the speediness and the fast pace is liked by the kids most of the students and you can try this uh, gimkit also and uh, which will uh, uh, why they are liking like why, while writing the answers they'll be getting reward okay who is answering first and who is answering correctly they'll be getting reward on the screen continuously so that students will be becoming enthusiastic for attending the questions and for attending the correct uh, for answering the correct solutions also so if you want to conduct your quiz in a uh, lively environment and make them to answer correctly by seeing the reward on the screen itself you can use gimkit and the next one uh, it is familiar to all of us it is google classroom uh, yesterday's session ma'am discussed about google classroom so you can create uh, your own classroom in google and you can uh, uh, post your contents for uh, teaching learning uh, process as well as for assessment also you can use google classroom and go formative uh, it is also very it is also free actually it is uh, uh, embedded with integrated with google classroom so you can use go formative also for conducting the formative assessments and what is the advantage of uh, go formative is uh, it is having some uh, templates for conducting the assessments so pre made assessments are available in go formative tool and uh, you can use those uh, templates for conducting your own assessments but if you don't want those templates you can create your own assessment from the scratch so for that kind of customization also it is supporting 
so you can create your own assessment from the scratch by means of using go formative tool and it is integrated with your uh, uh, google classroom and so it is also free and it is also very easy to evaluate your students and to analyze the performance of the students right so google forms we used to have google forms for collecting the surveys from the students for collecting the details of vaccination for collecting the students uh, uh, present uh, present address and so on at the same time we can use google forms for uh, conducting the quizzes also okay so if you conduct quiz by means of using google forms it is very easy for us to analyze as well as to evaluate the performance of the students very easily and the next tool is kahoot uh, actually it is also free uh, kahoot is a game based uh, quiz tool Uh, which allow the faculty members or the uh, team leader to create a very engaging quizzes okay so if you start using kahoot then the students would uh, feel fun and they will become addict to kahoot also like uh, the previous uh, gim kit kahoot is also rewarding the students on the screen so that you can use kahoot uh, to make them uh, enthusiastic to attend the quizzes to attend the assessments next one mentimeter here some of the features are free and if you want to go for advanced features then you have to pay something okay and it is an interactive uh, presentation tool also you can use it for your course delivery as well as for conducting assessment and uh, we can make the students to poll uh, on this part and uh, we can understand whether they are live or not uh, online or not and we can check the understanding of the student uh, from the course content we delivered for the past 10 minutes so so many uh, Uh, provisions are provided in mentimeter so basic provisions are free but uh, you have to go for paying uh, if you are if you want to go for additional features of mentimeter okay and next one is quizzes and this is also liked by students uh, it can also be used for uh, formative assessment and it it will also be very fun if you use quizzes to conduct quizzes for your students this is also free okay next one is socratic and uh, socrative it is a web based formative assessment tool again you can uh, conduct all kind of formative assessments here you have a space race uh, uh, module is there in socrative and it is uh, uh, like a competitive quiz based game here also the students will be compete each other in order to get a good score like you are uh, kahoot as well as gimkit socrative is also providing scores to the students those who are uh, very fast and answering the correct questions so you can try these three tools for conducting the quizzes so that students will be very interactive and uh, uh, in classes as well as they will be very enthusiastic to attend the test assessments okay but uh, the thing is kahoot is free and gimkit is free and in case of socrative if you are having 50 students in class it will be free but if you are having more than 50 students then uh, you have to pay for the additional number of students okay and the next one next uh, uh, list of tools we have i spring suit and i spring suit you can use for both uh, summative assessment as well as formative assessment uh, it will permit us to conduct classes as well as it will permit us to make assessment for uh, descriptive type of questions as well as objective type of questions and it will permit us to upload our videos lecture materials and so on uh, and i list down these tools and uh, you please check for uh, the payment as well as the modules which will be given as free okay the next one is uh, spiral which will help us to conduct flipped classroom so we used to give a uh, video to the students of a particular session and we'll ask them to watch it before coming to the class and in the class we'll discuss about the particular topic because they watched the video and we we will check how the understanding of the student goes how much they understand in the particular topic or in the particular session so such kind of flipped classrooms can be conducted by means of using the tool spiral okay and uh, we can have uh, uh, assessments as well as collaboration with the students in a quicker manner by means of using the tool spiral okay and the next one is peer grade uh, peer grade is also having simple features for conducting the uh, assessments and it is having some built in rubrics uh, rubrics for assessment so after writing the examinations the students may themselves evaluate and they can understand among their class members among their classmates who is getting good score and who has answered 
which answer for particular question and in which uh, which part they are weak and they are strong and so on so such kind of students collaboration can be made by means of using peer grade tool but in which you have to provide the built in rubrics also for evaluation purpose okay next one near part uh, actually to capture the real time insight of the student like for polling for voting for uh, getting the answers on the spot uh, while delivering the lecture itself we can use near part uh, it is also simple and uh, quiz allies uh, this is also for tracking the monitoring uh, monitoring purpose only and we can engage uh, fun uh, in a fun manner we can engage the students by means of asking the questions uh, like a quiz okay and uh, we can have standard tag also while means of conducting the quizzes by means of using quiz allies okay in addition uh, i'll uh, give you some of the uh, tools which will be helpful for uh, recording audio video and uh, some other purposes uh, the very first uh, reason is to record audio and video these are the tools available specifically okay so specifically in this in the sense uh, sometimes we may ask the students to record video and upload it okay for example after conducting a session we can ask them to record 30 seconds video so in that 30 seconds video the students should explain what they understand in the previous topic or the current topic we delivered so such kind of uh, provisions are provided in these types of uh, tools like animoto audio note audio note will help us to upload audios and add puzzle actually in case of animoto the students will be permitted to upload 30 seconds but in case of add puzzle uh, they can record up to 5 minutes of video okay flipgrid quiz quick voice uh, recorder uh, vacaro and v video so all these tools will help us to make audio video content and to make the students to record audio video content and to upload it for our course for our particular course Uh, the next one to brainstorm mind map and collaborative so these are the categories uh, specifically helpful for us to uh, evaluate the students in the particular part we can use answer garden coggle concept board dot storming i brainstorm miro padlet and xmind these tools will help us to make them to compete with each other in the class like for example conducting uh, group discussions on a uh, topic on an emerging topic or on a hot topic uh, and to perform the mind mapping uh, okay, like uh, by giving by means of giving a concept and mapping uh, what are the solutions provided by all the students and to discuss with each other to collaborate with each other these tools are uh, specifically provided and please check for the uh, premium okay some of the things are uh, free some of the additional features are paid and not all the tools are free also some are some are commercial also okay and to present engage and inspire so we have to give our course or we have to deliver our course in a um, in an inspiring manner right uh, we have to use video or video images graphics animations and so on so if you want to have a very inspiring delivery of your course you can select any one of the tools from here like spark type form word picker like a uh, brain pop bunsy five card flicker play post it post it and so on so these tools will help you to create an inspiring or attractive presentation as well as the course content delivery and to generate word or tag clouds this one you know right by means of giving a concept we used to collect the words and the words will form a cloud like structure okay uh, in order to derive the concepts from the particular uh, collection of words so for those purpose you can use ed wordly and uh, tagsedo wordables and word art from your word ms office okay we can use these types of tools these uh, list of tools in order to generate the word cloud or in order to generate the tag cloud which will make the students to be more interesting uh, to interact with the course content or to understand the course content very clearly and to get real time feedback yes of course in all the tools we are collecting feedback we have polling options and so on but these tools are providing us many options provisions for collecting the real time feedback like a formative go soap box ixl peer deck clickers quickly so in a quicker manner in a very faster manner we can post the question and we can collect the answers from the students we can make any question and we can we can make them to poll so those who are online 
those who are listening to the clear lecture very clearly continuously they will be answering to those questions uh, otherwise they will be missing the polling because polling will be for a particular period only so we can close the feedback after 5 seconds or 3 seconds and so on so based on the uh, uh, based on the student's attention we can collect the feedbacks by means of using these kinds of tools and to strengthen teacher to student or student to student communication uh, we can use these uh, list of tools uh, biblionism class kick for all rubrics lino online stopwatch verso voice thread so these are the tools which will help uh, which have provisions for communicating each other, either the teacher to student or student to student. So some of the tools will not permit student to student communication, right? But here, uh, even in MS Teams also, we can have students to communicate with other students without any teacher, okay, in their class. So uh, such kind of provisions are provided in these uh, tools also. Please check for their uh, premium, okay? And to keep the conversation going uh, with the live chats, uh, you can use a back channel chat or chat C. Uh, live chat in the sense of uh, like a tweet. Uh, actually, the teacher's moderate version of Twitter is back channel chat. So during course content delivery itself, the students may post the queries and the comments about the particular course content using the back channel chat. Similarly, chat C also. It will also help us to collect the comments or as well as the chat from the students uh, during the content delivery itself in order to collect uh, the level of understanding of the students. Okay. So why we are going for exam softwares online? Um, uh, no way nowadays. We cannot have offline uh, exams. Uh, we cannot... Uh, uh, we have to keep social distancing and we, are, we should not touch anybody else things and so on without sanitizers and so on. So we have to go for conducting the exams also online. And while conducting the exams online by means of using online exam softwares, uh, we have to check with these kind of uh, points. Okay? We have to note down all those things. The very first thing is exam type. Uh, whether we are going for conducting objective examination or uh, subjective examination, formative or summative. Whether we are going to test the particular period of uh, delivery course delivery or the entire content of the course delivery we have to decide that first and question navigation whether we permit the students to uh, navigate between the question or not okay that is also very much important whether we are going to capture the candidate photo yes uh, during uh, proctored uh, uh, invigilation we can ask the students to uh, show the id card and we can check the face we can correlate the face uh, some of the online examination, auto proctoring examination will help us by means of capturing the candidate photo and it will check against the uh, up photo of the student in the application or in the database. So we have to decide that also. And difficulty level is uh, uh, we our aim is not to fail the students, right? Uh, the average student as well as the slow learners should also be made pass in our course. Uh, made in the sense not by means of giving grace marks, by checking the, their level of understanding, like uh, by means of giving easy questions, by means of giving easy questions 30 percentage or uh, medium questions uh, 30 percentage and uh, 40 percentage as uh, difficult level. So those who understand the course content very clearly and those who are very shrewd, they'll be attending all the levels of questions and they'll be getting good scores and even the slow learners will be uh, pass in the particular course by means of attending the easy questions as well as attending some of the middle level questions and so on. They'll try the difficult level question also. But while setting the question paper itself, we have to uh, set the levels of levels. Okay, We have to make sure that we are testing all the students in our class because not the entire class is having toppers. We have slow learners also. So we have to test all the students based on a single test so that we have to be very clear with the difficulty level of the questions also negative marking and in case of online examination yes in, even in NEET also we have negative marking uh, but uh, we have to think whether we have to go for negative marking because forever uh, university or college examinations negative marking is not necessary but mostly the competitive exams like uh, NEET, NEET and all are having negative marking uh, and they reduce marks for the uh, wrong answers and so on but uh, for our uh, students we won't practice these kind of negative marking right and the schedule or timer is, is it should be there right they should start the exam on time 
and they should finish their exam on time so we have to schedule it without uh, without fail okay and subject and topics yes uh, we have the course and we have the contents in the particular course like modules or the units or the topics so according to the uh, according uh, actually we should cover all the topics right all the modules all the content we should not concentrate on a particular module alone we should not leave any of the module uh, during teaching and the question should cover the entire uh, topics of the particular course and after that it is very important exam result pre exam result processing it uh, yes of course in all the accreditation uh, they ask what is the pass percentage of uh, uh, of the students in a particular course and in all the batches the comparative study the graphs and so on so it is also uh, possible by means of conducting the online examination the exam result processing okay right uh, so now it's time for demonstration uh, so far we heard uh, dealt what is meant by assessment and type of assessment and some of the tools uh, we, you, we can use for assessing our students either formatively or summatively and we use uh, important tools like uh, MS Teams, uh, Moodle, uh, sometimes faculty use uh, Google Forms also and Schoology also for, con uh, for conducting the quizzes or for conducting the examinations. So let me give you some demonstration on these tools uh, if time permits much more. Okay. Is my screen visible? No, no. MS Teams, no. I'm sharing the entire screen. But share option is not enabled. One moment. Share option. Ah, your entire screen could you want to share the contents of your screen. Is share enabled? Any permission is needed? Selva, click that window. Da. Present screen could you know. Ah. Put the window the entire screen comic on the screen a click on it to share click on whatever yes share right your entire screen right ah, your entire screen click on in no and the put the window open on desktop Maria other yes. pull over put the either call yeah other select on it a promoter share enable now okay fine share now it is visible. Ah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Swati. Yes. Thank you, Swati. Thank you. Thank you, Swati. Thank you. Okay, fine. Uh, now let me explain you about MS Team first. Okay. So MS Team uh, actually it's uh, uh, it's licensed, and uh, we got MS Team for uh, conducting our online classes uh, when the pandemic starts. Okay. Uh, here uh, you have so many number of options for conducting the classes as well as for accessing your students also. Uh, so the class creation, uh, if I go, then it will be uh, very deeper. So by means of uh, going for joining or creating a team, you can create, uh, okay, let me do it, create team. So this create team will help you to create uh, the entire class, your class for a particular course. So this is for the class purpose. So you can go for class and you can name it like uh, uh, anything like all the course 21, 22. Okay, next. 
so now you are creating your team for your class and uh, adding students uh, is by automatically you can do it by means of giving your students mail id here uh, for example if you type uh, the name automatically our mail ids are linked here uh, so whoever is having a vit account will be given and we can add the uh, students and we can give add and this particular student will be added so group of students will be added like this okay so now your class is created your team is created and here you can create channels also separately for uh, conducting theory for conducting lab or for conducting projects and so on uh, here you can go for channel and of course let's create channel okay add channel so add channel uh, you can create channel for theory separately okay and for uh, creating lab separately and for creating projects so in this way we can create separate channels like theory projects lab uh, uh, if you are having different number of uh, different uh, students for theory project or lab or if you are having uh, the same set of students for your theory project and lab also right so if you create a, a class as a team you can create separate channels and in each and every channel you can post your own files you can upload the, you can post messages here like by means of clicking conversation and by uploading files here you can upload your own lectures videos audio or whatever it is so you can add a new tab and you can go for adding anything any material you want to have but this is specifically for theory and you can go for lab channel according to lab channel if you post a message it will be going to the students automatically through mail as well as in ms team also so you can create any number of channels like this okay and assignments here you have assignments you have grades insights and so on actually i have already created team for my uh, courses in this semester so let me explain you with the help of this so i am conducting an information system security course for the students uh, in two batches in morning batch as well as in afternoon batch so i conducted i created two teams like this and uh, here i am i don't have lab session so i am having theory as well as j component channels okay so if i want to conduct a quiz for example a formative assessment we have to go for the particular team and we have to go for assignments okay so already i conducted some worksheet and digital assignments on particular topics so you can check how many number of students turned in 52 turned in means 52 submitted okay 29 turned in so you can check the number of uh, students who turned on time also okay if you want to create a new assignment you can go for create if you want to create an assignment you can click assignment if you want to click uh, create a quiz you can click quiz so if you want to create an assignment like uh, on a particular topic you can uh, have like this uh, assignment 2 okay and you can ins give instructions like this and if you want to upload any question you can attach the file and if you want to give points you can give points here how many number of points and you can add rubrics also according to your evaluation procedure and automatically it will be assigned to the particular team like e1 t e1 slot students right because i am creating assignment in that particular team so for that particular class of all students this assignment will be created and it it is you have a freedom like a date due date by means of setting the due date you can go for editing and you can set the due date for example schedule to assign in future in the sense in future the assignment will be assigned if you want to create it now and if you want to assign it tomorrow you can do it like this otherwise automatically the assignment will be going to the students immediately like due date you can specify so by means of clicking the calendar you can specify due date and you can specify time also and you can click close date if you click close date after the due date the assignments will not be uh, accepted by the ms teams okay the students should enter the assignments before the due date as well as the closing time okay so in this way you can uh, create assignments and uh, after creating the assignments like this you can go for assigning it if you assign it automatically this assignment will be sent to all the students in ms team and in ms team itself they need to write down the assignment they need to scan it and they need to upload the assignment okay and 
if you are uh, going to create a quiz going to create a quiz you can again click uh, assignment and in assignment you can go for create and quiz and in quiz uh, already several quizzes have been conducted and you can go for clicking new quiz here automatically it would be saving but give some uh, quiz name like uh, quiz demo and if you want to give descriptions here you can give descriptions and add new add new will help you to add uh, questions but it is an easier manner like if you want to give multiple choice question or if you want to give uh, or if you want to get an answer from the student by means of using text and so on date and rating so on so if you want to have a choice question then you can uh, click it and you can type question In this way, okay. Sorry, I had a spelling mistake. Right. I have given two options, and according to the two options, which one is the correct answer? You can click it. If you want to do automatic evaluation, you can do it, right? Uh, so this is the correct option. So I am checking the correct answer, and I want to give one mark. So points you can have. And it is the required uh, question to be answered by all the students. They should not miss this question. So I am giving required. Okay. So in this way, you can create any number of questions like this with various types. And if you want to make the students to upload the file also, after uh, writing 10 number of pieces, if you want to make the students to write descriptive answers, you can go for file upload. Okay file upload so a file will be created in uh, ms1 drive and you have to click accept it and you have to specify the question for example simply i'm giving for demonstration purpose details about uh, conventional encryption techniques uh, in detail with example the examples so here uh, the students should upload a file by means of clicking this upload file. And here you can restrict number of files. The students should upload only one file by means of writing all the encryption techniques in a single file. And you can set the file size also, whether you accept 10 MB or 100 MB or 1 GB and so on. Okay, If the students are uploading images, you can go for choosing 1, 1 GB and so on. So for each student, we are setting the file number uh, that is in the quiz. I'm setting the file number limit as 1 and the single file size is 10 MB. Okay, And this question is also a required. So if you set it required, then before the time completes, the student should answer all the 10 questions as well as they should uh, upload the file also. So you have to be very careful while setting the timing. Okay, And you can go for uh, giving preview. And the preview mode will be given for both computer as well as mobile. So if the students are writing it and uh, using computer, then the display will be like this. So here the upload file is enabled. You can check. And both the, both the questions are compulsory. So it is giving uh, star here. And if the students are uh, browsing in mobile, in mobile, the question will be looking like this. OK. If this is a cho choice option. And here is the upload file op uh, question. And uh, they have to do it. And they have to click the submit button. OK. So in this way, you can uh, create questions like this. And after creating, you can go for uh, done. Now your quiz demo is ready with the questions. OK. And uh, the points are two, only two, two points we had given. And if you want to edit, you can edit also. And this will go to all the students in the particular class. And date due, I'm giving. OK. Today is uh, 24th. And before 24th, today, 11.59, they have to submit it. Okay, And uh, you, if you want, you can uh, you can do addition also. You can edit the particular thing. Wherever you want to do the correction, you can do it, but before assigning it to the students. So if you once click the Assign button, it will be automatically going to all the students in MS Teams, and they'll, uh, they'll identify when is the la last time, and they'll start writing also. Okay. So in this way, uh, after writing the quiz, you can go to uh, the Excel sheet in which you'll be getting the score of the students. 
if they had selected correctly then they'll be having one but in the file upload question you have to evaluate it manually and you have to assign the mark also manually so this is what we do for uh, conducting the quizzes as well as for uh, getting the assignments from the students assignments from the students okay. by means of using ms teams so if you are institute uh, institute is going for uh, ms or ms teams for uh, teaching learning purpose then uh, definitely it would be a greater thing for utilizing it for delivering our content okay and here uh, for uh, creating sessions also you can go for a calendar and you can click new meeting once if you configure it it is very easy um, i'm giving demo and uh, at when on uh, in which date you are scheduling the meeting and add channel simply you can choose the particular class and if you want to conduct a theory session you can choose theory session if you want to conduct a project then you you can create a, you can click it on j component okay the particular channel will be selected and this meeting details if i give send this meeting details will be given to the entire class of students okay so it's a very good platform uh, for us for uh, teaching learning purpose as well as for evaluation also okay and while writing the examination the students can uh, switch on the video but the streaming would be slow and uh, we are using core tandra platform for conducting the assessments separately but the internal assessments uh, for uh, for example like uh, assignments digital assignments and for conducting the quizzes we are utilizing the ms team platform only okay right um right uh, the next one i want to uh, discuss you is google form so hope you all are familiar with google form uh, but anyway i'll i'll tell you a glance alone i'll i'll have a glance alone on google form uh, if you are uh, having a uh, if you are going to click on forms in google then it will be automatically taking it to your survey only and you can uh, simply give like a g dot uh, like a g dot co and uh, uh, create a quiz automatically it will be taking you the uh, quiz version okay quiz version of the google and the the form is already open let me close this one now uh, here uh, you can have the title of the form so you can use all those things for both summative as well as uh, uh, formative purposes okay so here untitled the question uh, the question okay again which are substitution ciphers so if i want to give options to the students i am going to make use of this option multiple option question so i am giving the options to the students okay uh, caesar cipher uh, playfer vigenier none and if you want to uh, permit the students to click more than so here we are checking it as multiple choice and if we want to permit the students to go for uh, checking more than one number of answers we can go for using check boxes okay if you give check box then the student may select more than one number of uh, answers uh, here we we can uh, have several types of questions like short answer paragraph multiple choice check boxes drop down and here also we have file upload the students can write and scan and upload the file for the particular thing multiple choice grid for uh, match the following questions check box grid for match the following grids and for choosing the date and time and so on so for the depending on the type of the question we are going to ask you can choose any any kind of uh, type here and after adding the options uh, you can go for clicking answer key okay what are the uh, substitution ciphers we are having here uh, playfer cipher is also substitution cipher caesar cipher as well as vigenier cipher okay so we are having all these three types of substitution ciphers so if the students uh, have uh, checked all the three then three points will be given okay otherwise if you want to set only one mark for the particular quiz you can set one point okay then and if you want to make the question compulsory you can give the required field so my means of uh, setting all the things like this you can go for adding question here add question since google is free and we all are almost having gmail account you can utilize this 
uh, but the only problem is you have to create a link and you have to send the link separately to the students to attend the quiz. Okay, so add question. Me size in AES quiz. I want to have it as a short answer. The students has to fill. Okay, so the students uh, may have several answers because uh, AES is having various uh, number of uh, keys also. So I want to have uh, one twenty eight or one ninety two or 256. So any one answer if the student is providing, then I'll be allotting marks. So the points one, okay, and done. So if any one of the answer like 128 or 92 or 256, uh, in the place, the student will be getting one mark. And this question is also a required question. So I'm giving required, compulsory, okay. So in this way, you can create any number of questions of any number of type. But to make the students uh, interest to write the examination, you can select different types of questions. You can frame different types of questions, actually. Okay. So after uh, completing the questions and after, if you want to make it autocorrect, you have to give the answer key also as well as the points also. If you want to do it manually, don't give the answer key here and the points here for the questions. But no way, right? If we are using tools, if you are going for auto correction, that would be better, right? Then uh, you can go to settings. You can go to send, and here send via email. If you want to send, you can give the collection of emails here, or you can go to this, and you can get the link for this quiz exam. And this is very lengthy, so you can click a shorten URL, and you are having the short form of the URL. You can copy, and you can send it to the students through bulk email. Okay. Or you can post it in your WhatsApp group also. So in this way, you can conduct quiz as well as the summative assessment based on or by means of using uh, Google Form. It is very free and it is very uh, user friendly also, right? And the responses will be updated here, okay? And here we are having Excel sheet. So if you click this Create Spreadsheet, you'll be getting the spreadsheet of the responses by the students. And you can do the performance analysis very easily by means of using the spreadsheet. So you can copy it and you can ma manipulate and you can uh, construct graphs and you can list down how many number of uh, failures or how many number of toppers and so on. So many number of things uh, using spreadsheet, you know, but the responses you will be getting here and you can easily analyze the performance of the students based on the their performance. Okay, based on their so answers and based on the evaluation score. Okay. So this is about Google Form, right? This will also known to you, but at glance. Okay. The next one is Schoology. Schoology is a, a platform which is also free. And uh, before going to MS Teams, we had uh, Schoology for conducting the quizzes. Okay. And uh, here also you can go for courses. You can create courses of your own courses for your own number of students. And uh, after creating courses, for example, I created course uh, information system security in E1 slot uh, 4 known. These are the options I'm having, uh, materials, OK? I can upload materials. For uploading the materials, you can create folder. For example, add folder. And I am already having a folder module 1. So let me create another folder module 2, OK? And in that folder, you can upload uh, materials of any kind for example video or audio or presentation or document or pdf anything you can upload for example it is very user friendly and it is very attractive also so you can choose color of the folder and you can give the description uh, for example this uh, module covers conventional and modern encryption techniques So the description about the particular module you can give and if you want to add date you can do it otherwise you just leave it because we are creating the content alone and you can publish it so if you create then you will be getting module 2 folder okay so inside this module you can click the folder here you can add materials for example if you want to add a file you can go to add file okay 
whether you want to add a link or any other tool you want to link, uh, you want to add a file. So this file may be anything, right? But here the maximum file size they have given is 512. So let me attach file for my students. For second module, okay, for module two, let me choose topic one, classical encryption, substitution. Or if you want to select more than one number of files, you can choose more than one number of files and you can click open and the files will be added to the particular folder. So in this way, you can create, click add, you can create the content for your course by means of using the materials tab. Okay, right. Let me go to the course again. So I created module one folder. Under this, I, I had added the materials for uh, module one. And I had provided one digital assignment also for module one. Okay. And I created quiz one. And now folder uh, module two in which I added material for module two. If you want to uh, add a quiz in general, in general, you can create it. Or inside module two, you can create a quiz. So go to add materials. Add assignment. Right here, you can create code, create an assignment. So you can give assignment name here. Digital assignment two, and you can provide the description about the assignment, and you can set the due date. Okay. And the points, you can have either 10 or 20 based on the complexity. And category uh, graded. Obviously, we are going for graded category. And period, no grading period. Uh, so let us leave it and uh, we'll do it. And uh, factor it, it will be by default, it will be automatically 1.0. And uh, we used to have a numeric uh, uh, valuation only. And after having this, create. Okay, so in this way, second as assignment, the digital assignment has been created, and based on the uh, due date, the students will uh, give the uh, content and upload it, and we can um, evaluate it, grade it for each and every student manually if it is an assignment. Let me have a break. So in this way, Schoology is a free platform in which we can create our own courses. And we, we have so many options like uh, updates, grade book. After, as, after assessing the students, after evaluating the students, we'll be getting the grade book for the particular class. And here the names will be listed down and uh, the calculation for each and every student and what was the due date and when the student entered the assignment or the quiz and so on. So grade setup you can use you can use okay whether the grading scale is numeric or something else and uh, you want to uh, override the column and so on you can re read it very easily right uh, you people are familiar with more number of tools and this schoology is also very easy to uh, make the teaching learning as well as the evaluation purpose in an easier manner okay so ms teams google forms uh, schoology and final one it is going to be moodle right uh, in moodle Actually, we have uh, account and our administrator, if we request our administrator, they'll create uh, classes uh, for us in a particular uh, semester. Uh, for each and every class after creation, uh, we can configure the lab activity or a theory activity, quiz and so on. Okay, So here I'm utilizing uh, uh, Moodle for conducting a course programming in C. Okay, actually, this is uh, Dr. Vairamuthu's account, and I don't use Moodle in this semester, so I'm demonstrating from his account. And for programming in C uh, theory, uh, it the class has been created. Okay, 
so to utilize Moodle, it is open source actually. If you go for it, it, it will be very good uh, for both theory as well as for programming languages. Automatically, we can evaluate the coding by means of giving test cases and so on. Okay. Now, uh, after logging in, we need to go to this setting and uh, we have to click edit setting. Right. Okay. Check whether this turn editing is on after logging in. Uh, if it is off, then you couldn't edit anything. So once if it is on, you can edit the topic. Okay. So turn the editing on. Uh, for this course, the topics has been created like uh, has to uh, topic 1, 2, up to 10. Okay. You can rename the topic at any time by means of clicking the edit button. For example, if I want to change topic 1 to module 1, I can edit it. Okay. So for each and everything, we have the edit option. If you click this edit turning on, if turn editing off, then you cannot edit anything in the list. Okay. Right. Next, uh, you can go to the topic, particular topic. And for each topic, you may have activity also. You can add activity or resources also for each and every topic. For example, let me choose topic 5. Okay. For topic 5. So in topic 5, we have add an activity or resource. So this will help you to add any quiz or any assessment or any programming activity or any material upload. Anything you can do by means of clicking this add an activity or resource button. Okay, If you click it, you can see enormous amount of resources here. So all are here. If you click activity, then activities will be listed down. If you click resources, the resources will be listed down. You can see the uh, plugins here like a big blue button also. Actually, we were asked to use big blue button for flip the classroom uh, earlier. Okay, So, so many options are available here for conducting quiz, like for conducting quiz, for conducting questionnaire, for conducting virtual programming. The students are remotely present now and they are doing programming. They may copy the coding from the web and they may upload it for the particular lab experiment right to avoid those things we can do the virtual program <coughs> virtual programming also excuse me so this plugin will help us to uh, create virtual programming laboratory in an efficient manner and we can conduct quiz and we can conduct uh, uploading the assignments and so on okay so many options are available let me explain you the three the first one assignment so if you click on assignment so for the particular class for the particular course under the topic 5 i'm going to add a new assi <coughs> assignment okay i'm giving assignment name It's a digital assignment 5 because it is fifth topic so I'm giving digital assignment 5 okay description um, this assignment will evaluate you based on the originality of your report so any description you can give okay if you give display description on the course page it will be automatically displayed and if you want uh, want to add any files which contains the questions you can click this files link and you can uh, uh, link the file particular file in which you are having the questions okay? and availability so this is about your submission timing only uh, so also uh, this allows submissions from okay from on which date from which date onwards this is permitting the submission if you click it enable it, it will be automatically or if you want to change the timing you can change the timing also okay if you want to make it enable you make it enable otherwise you can make it disable and due date you can uh, automatically it will be giving one week of due date from the current date of the creation you can give a different due date also if you want to give some more extra days you can give some more extra days okay 
and if you want to make moodle to remind you to grade this particular assignment then you can uh, give a remind uh, remind me to grade by the particular date okay so if you want to make it enable you make it enable otherwise you leave it so just a due date we have given okay submission type so file submission only because this is an assignment if you give online text automatically it will be giving uh, space to enter the text but we have the file submissions for assignment content and maximum number of upload files uh, obviously it is going to be one only right the students should submit only one file as assignment in which they should have the content for the particular uh, topic okay and the submission size of the file you can choose the file size according to the content you are expecting and accepted file type it is also very important otherwise student will uh, upload any kind of uh, files so it would be uh, better if you choose uh, pdf okay so you can go with any kind of file type if you want to choose any kind of file to be uploaded by the student you can restrict the student to the particular file type okay audio file or video file or a document file okay document file will permit to upload word document as well as uh, uh, odt from uh, linux environment as well as a pdf also or rich text file also okay so you can choose the particular file type and you can click changes so this assignment will accept only the documents of the particular type okay and feedback types okay if you want to give feedback to the students you have to specify so the whatever the feedback you are giving as comments will be posted to the students whatever the annotation annotation uh, you are correcting by means of using your stylus and so on right that annotation will also be present to the students in the pdf after correction if you don't want to have the annotation you can click it but it should be there uh, because the students should know that we corrected their uh, observations right the assignments and offline grading worksheet it's not needed right feedback files uh, comment in line right after setting feedback types submission settings um, the submission button will be there to the students so after uploading the file the student should click the submit button otherwise it will not be given to the teacher so require students to click the submit button yes so the submit button will be given to the student and require that students accept the submission statement it's not needed so no additional attempts we should not give right so never uh, okay never uh, they should have only one attempt to upload group submission settings is for the <clears throat> assignments which we are assigning in a group so we used to have group of students and the team leader will be there for a particular team will be giving a particular uh, topic and if it is the case we can go for group submission setting but individual assignments team assignment sorry digital assignments will be given individually so if you want to go for setting the group assignments you can go for group setting assignments right notifications if you want to notify the students about the submission about the uh, evaluation you can go for notification otherwise no need grading is yes, points uh, maximum points 10 okay and grading method direct grading only and uh, categorized no need now uh, anonymous anonymous submission we should not permit because uh, the students those who uh, are in our class in the particular uh, room classroom uh, alone can submit the submissions so anonymous submissions no okay so hide the grader identity from the students if you want to hide it you can give as yes, otherwise it's it may be no and marking overflow no right common module setting restrict access okay restrict access is for uh, um, the network uh, connectivity for example if we are uh, asking the students to write the examination or submit the assignment inside the campus then we can provide the uh, access restriction they should not use other ips for accessing the question or assignment and so on if you want to do it you can do it uh, and activity completion uh, you can uh, track it manually by means of completion tracking uh, tag if you want to add any tag and uh, unicheck plagiarism plugin is available already if you want to use it you can use it okay if you want to test the assignment of the particular student for plagiarism for uniqueness you can use this plugin uh, so enable unique uh, unicheck plagiarism yes Uh, check already delivered assignment submissions because the course is offered uh, by us repeatedly in each and every uh, academic year already some st the students do uh, many nasty things right they will get the assignment solution from their seniors but we have to be very clear that we should not repeat the questions actually 
so if already submitted uh, uh, assignments are there with us in google uh, database so if we want to check it also we can give s yes here okay and add submissions to institutional library yes we used to submit our uh, report phd reports and so on to our institutional library if we want to check this assignment against those submissions also we can give yes otherwise no because we don't have programming assignments in university library and sources for comparison yes uh, internet as well as library if you want to check you can check okay uh, because students used to copy from internet and they want to paste it simply for any assignment so you can give uh, internet and exclude sources with match less than for example uh, if less than two percentage then we can leave that particular source otherwise i want to have exactly uh, original original assignment from the students i can give zero here and exclude sources with match less than words eight but if we give eight it would be much more right so we can restrict it to three exclude citations because some of the tools which we check for plagiarism will include citations also for example if we give a paper title uh, author name which will be included in uh, citations automatically but that citation will also be considered for uh, plagiarism report in such case if you want to exclude the citations then you can go here and you can give this okay and exclude references yes uh, so similarity score to the student if you want to give it to the student you can click s yes. if you don't want you can give it no but we are giving only one attempt the student should know how much they copied from others or from the internet so we should send the similarity so scores to the student after evaluating the assignments okay right and notify student via email again you have a yes or no option maximum number of uh, files to be checked in archive uh, you can have it uh, it is uh, basically 20 but if you want to increase the number you can increase the number and so on right competencies if you want to check uh, for competencies you can do it otherwise uh, you can save and display so if you click save and display automatically the assignment will be given to the students uh, in Moodle in their Moodle account and the due date along with the due date and everything whatever the instruction we have given everything will be given to the students in their Moodle account automatically and they'll start doing the assignments okay so this is creating assignments uh, by means of checking the plagiarisms also right if we want to create a quiz it is also very simple let me choose topic three okay in topic three i'm adding an activity and if you want to add a resource you can go to file or folder uh, and if you choose a file that particular file will be added into the particular uh, topic particular module so by means of giving for example in the third module we have uh, uh, number theory fundamentals okay number theory fundamentals and you can give the description about the topic and you can select files ppts here and you can drop it dro drop the files here and the uh, files will be automatically given to the students for the particular topic okay so uh, how to add topics or how to conduct as how to add assignments and how to add a quiz this is also very easy similar to our other platforms like ms team and uh, Google form here also it is easy to conduct a uh, quiz okay me uh, quiz three since this is the third topic or the third module and give the description here and timing okay on which time you can create a quiz now and you can open the quiz later so if you click this enable button and if you set the date in future for example uh, 30th September I'm creating it today but I'm going to open the quiz on 30th September only and you can set the timing also okay and if you want to close the quiz on 30th September again you can set the date okay 30th September but uh, opening time quiz opening time 10 10 a.m. and I want to close the quiz by 10:15 then you can uh, set the timing accordingly and time limit okay automatically it will be uh, closed so time limit uh, for each and every question you can set it otherwise you can leave it between this 15 minutes the student should answer the quiz because we opened and we closed the quiz on the particular time okay so when the time expires open attempts are submitted automatically and the grace period if you want to give you can give if the students have not answered any question 
and must be submitted before the time expires or they are not counted so you can choose your own option so be strict while conducting the quizzes okay and uh, grading uh, okay it is some categorized only grade to pass if you want to uh, give five marks for uh, passing grade in quiz you can give attempts allowed you should restrict to one only one attempt the students will be permitted and uh, layout every question will be displayed or every two questions will be displayed all the questions are one page so how you want to display your questions you can choose right and uh, question behavior uh, review options okay so many options are available in uh, model safe exam browser if you want to uh, make the students to use the safe exam browser you can uh, configure it you have to do it externally manually but if you don't want they can answer quiz from any browser you can click on no okay extra restrictions on attempts uh if you want to give a password here and the students those who are having the password alone can write the quiz you can give the password here okay and the uh, overall feedback okay common module setting so if all these settings you have to uh, specify and then unicheck plagiarism plugin also available for conducting the quizzes and after save and uh, uh, display the the things will be displayed to the students and you will be taken to setting the question paper okay question also so once you complete it it will be added to the particular course to the particular students okay so creating quiz by means of using moodle is also easy right next is a very important concept conducting virtual lab or virtual programming for example let me take topic 9 in topic 9 i'm going to add a virtual programming concept okay so if you click virtual programming plugin automatically we, you will be taken to virtual programming uh, lab to particular topic particular module number and uh, here it is general let me give a, a topic name here demo the short description or module utilization in an effective manner with a short description if you want to give a full description you can write a paragraph about it okay or let me do uh, the full description here and the short description type okay. it the submission period again you can set the period automatically it will be for one week you can change the timing if you want submit restrictions for the lab activities the student should submit only one file and type of work individual work we are not giving group work okay so individual work only and grading points for each and every experiment we allot 10 marks okay category and category step by means of uh, by default it will be and if you want to give grade to pass okay and reduction by automatic evaluation if you want to reduce the mark by automatic evaluation you can specify the mark here free evaluation and visibility yes okay common module setting restrict access in the particular uh, from the particular ip or the net uh, internet uh, inter internet alone the student want to access sorry the students have to access you have to specify restrict access otherwise leave it activity completion the timing you have to specify okay rest of the things not needed for uh, conducting the virtual laboratory just uh, save and uh, return to the course it will be returning to the course and i created for topic 9 right now it is created demo is created after creating you have to edit it in order to add the details right so demo here we have uh, submission list this demo and uh, the due date whatever is specified maximum number of files the students should upload so everything will be displayed to the students also okay and uh, okay here if you have an uh, icon in which you have so many number of options also okay if you want to conduct a laboratory virtual programming laboratory Uh, you have to first choose uh, which mode or which window the or IDE the students are going to or which programming the students are going to. So first you have to set the execution options. Okay. So execution options uh, you can uh, go for choosing either assessment one or te or test one or whatever it is. Here so many number of uh, programming languages have been specified by model. Uh, 
freely right you can choose the programming language on which the students are going to do the laboratory activity so choose python 3 because uh, we are uh, insisting the students to do the python programming in python 3 so i am using python 3 here okay and for uh, debugging the script of the uh, program python code written by the students uh, we should uh, select the separate uh, debugging option so i am choosing the debugging option file like uh, with the first file i am using python 3 so this uh, debugging uh, uh, interpreter will interpret the python script okay we if we provide run option to the students we have to specify yes otherwise no if we provide debug option to the students we have to specify yes otherwise no and evaluation we are going to do the evaluation right manually or automatically we have to do the evaluation okay yes and evaluate on just uh, just on submission immediately once the student click the button then automatically it will be evaluated so click no okay automatic grade if you want to click uh, click as yes, otherwise uh, you give it no okay and save options so now the uh, execute execution options are filled the the particular laboratory the students are going to write down the python programming uh, and it is going to be based on the python ide so everything is set up right and again you click on topic 9 and uh, go to this uh, topic and uh, go here okay if you want to add one minute if you want to add the test cases you can add the test cases here so this one will help you to give the test cases for evaluating the students coding so students will be writing very simple code to swap two numbers for example like in python it is very easy a comma b is equal to b comma a that's it right so if you want to evaluate that code submitted by the students by means of writing the test cases you can click on the test cases plugin and you can write down the test cases for example i am writing my test case 1 okay test case 1 for test case 1 i am giving two uh, inputs 10 comma 20 and uh, i am writing okay so case 1 uh, the students will be giving <coughs> input as 10 comma 2 and the output expected is 20 comma 10 okay and i want to give one more test case so case is equal to 2 second test case i am giving uh, for example input is uh, 54 comma 89 and the output should be 89 comma 54 so in this way we can give test cases and if we set the test cases automatically the program you after completing everything you have to save the test case you can add any number of test cases but remember that before the cases you have to leave one line space okay so case 1 this is case 2 and if you want to give case 3 you can specify this is o okay two i had given zero sorry so if you want to include the next case uh, test case you can give case 3 and the input 100 100 200 200 and the output 200 100 so what the <coughs> model will do once the students uh, write the code and uh, submit it uh, they have the execute option also run option also so while running the coding they will give input and at the same time you we can use the test cases to evaluate their uh, coding 
okay so automatically if the test case is one automatically it will take the test cases one by one and it will test the code by means of giving the input 10 and 20 and if the output is 20 and 10 then only the student coding is correct okay so all the test cases will be tested on the students coding so just click on save okay once you do the corrections are adding the test cases you click on save and if you if you use it full screen then it will go to full screen and on topic 9 demo okay right so now the test cases are listed down here once the students entered the code and while clicking the execute option the test cases will be run on the code and if they had written the correct co correct coding for swapping the two numbers it will be passed and what is the grading we have given that automatic grading will also be displayed to the student because we have given grading maximum 10 and uh, we permit the students to run uh, the code and based on the Python 3 uh, interpreter it will be run and it will be given based on your the test cases you have given okay so in this way you can test the coding or the laboratory experiments uploaded by your students combinedly to all to the entire class we have settings for all those things so combinedly together and you can go for similarity checking also okay if you want to check for similarity for all the students you can use it and uh, scan scanning options maximum output by the similarity so everything can be done plagiarism including plagiarism for assignment plagiarism for coding can also be done if they simply copy the code from the web and paste it in moodle it will also be identified by moodle and the similarity report will be given okay so everything is fixed here and uh, you can in a single click you can uh, correct the entire coding of the entire class and you will be getting the submission list here and in the submission list it will be added uh, with the entire students list submitted on submissions it is very important because the students are permitted to submit again and again they are, they are permitted to debug the code also so if they debug the code and if they again submit it any number of times they can submit and all the submission count for example if the student executed the code 15 number of times this submission will give number 15 if the student executed 100 number of times it will give 100 but we have to take the latest submission because the first submission may be having some bugs so we have to take the latest submission but we can understand okay how many number of times the students executed debug the code uh, again and again okay and the grade grade automatically you can uh, uh, you can give negative grading also based on the test cases but it will go in deeper if you want to have uh, hands on exercises on moodle if you if you want to practice Moodle in your institute, you can contact experts from our institutes. Okay, so grading will be given automatically, and who's the evaluator? Yourself, the faculty name, and evaluated on with the date and time. Everything will be displayed in this evaluation panel. Okay, the submission list panel. So once you evaluate, the score will be given to the students. Okay, fine. So Moodle is an uh, open source platform uh, in which you can uh, utilize. Uh, so many number of plugins for conducting uh, quizzes as well as uh, your uh, uh, all the laboratory experiment activities in a very efficient manner uh, no need to pay anything for it uh, but we should have a good infrastructure with a good administrator for configuring our uh, classes as well as uh, uh, to manage our data also okay right next uh, let me conclude uh, it's going to be time uh, so assessment is the critical part of learning that uh, we all agree here. Uh, so we have to make it user friendly. Um, the traditional method methods gone, right? We have to make it user friendly so that we are having so many number of tools interactively for providing the assessment uh, uh, rubrics as well as for uh, making it uh, evaluated. So we have to make it a user friendly. And we can explore different types of questions. Don't go for choose the best option always. Just give a blank or a paragraph, simple paragraph writing. And evaluate that particular question alone uh, by yourself. Okay. So explore different types of questions to the students so that they will be very much interested in answering uh, the particular test or the quiz. And uh, you can permit auto checking also by means of using the tools you are using so that the analysis performance analysis will be very easier for you it will be done automatically no need to count anything uh, manually okay and uh, report the performance analysis yes it is not uh, nothing wrong in it to report the performance of the students 
in their class itself okay how many number of students got good score and how many number of students got uh, less score uh, it is a good practice to re report it uh, to the students so that they'll understand their level of uh, uh, knowledge in the entire team in the entire pr team okay so by this i wish to conclude uh, we can uh, try to fill the gaps also uh, by means of understanding the report uh, uh, of the performance of the students we can fill the gaps okay how many slow learners how many toppers and how many average and what to do to bring them up uh, from the slow learners to the middle learners and the middle learners to the toppers what we have to do what are the resources we have to provide and so on okay so by this i want to conclude the session on uh, the tools and techniques for effective online evaluation and uh, one more quote by nelson mandela education is the most important or the powerful weapon which you can use to change the world is it is uh, of course it is true 100 percent true so we people are uh, uh, we people should be very proud to be teachers and let's do our duty in a very passionate manner uh, thank you very much and i wish to thank uh, uh, again the management as well as uh, hod and other faculty members for giving me this greater opportunity for sharing my views and ideas on this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any queries? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Anita, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your very, very, very good talk as well as the nice demonstration. Definitely, the, that will help for the participants. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Formal vote of thanks. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your ins inspirational speech. Thank you is the best prayer that anyone could say. With this note, I like to invite. Mr. M. Pani Silvam, sir, to deliver vote of thanks. Good afternoon to one and all. I am having much pleasure to propose vote of thanks on this wonderful occasion. First of all, I would like to thank our college management and our dynamic principal, Dr. C. Asok, sir, for giving the permission to conduct this faculty development program. Next, I would like to thank our head of the department, Dr. J. Jabakumari Biula Vasandi, ma'am, and the organizing secretary, Mrs. K. Meena, ma'am, for arranging this faculty development program. Next, I would like to thank today's chief guest, Dr. B. Selvarani, madam, for delivering the very informative lecture on various tools and techniques for effective online evaluation. Very interesting session, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And next, I would like to thank our uh, Mendy colleges and uh, other college participants. Finally, I thank our department staff members and the student volunteers for their excellent uh, involvement for this program. Thank you and thank you one and all. Thank you, sir. Thank you once again. Dear participants, we shall meet in the third day, that is next day, in the final day of faculty development program tomorrow. Until then, bye. Thank you. Thank you.